first thing that we need to do for our royal self portraits is to mix our skin tone. So from the story we listened to, you'll need yellow, red, and brown. You'll need a paintbrush, some water. You'll need two pieces of paper, but we're gonna start with one. So the first color, no matter what your skin tone is, is yellow. So everyone's going to start with the yellow. I'm gonna get the yellow nice and juicy. My watercolor set. And then I'm gonna paint my entire paper yellow. The next color that you'll need in your paint set is red. So again, I get the red nice and juicy and I'm going to paint right on top of my yellow. You'll notice that I'm working a little bit fast because I don't want the paint to dry before the colors can mix together. Do you notice that the color is starting to look more peach-like? That's what we're going for. Now for some of you, this skin tone might be perfect, but I am a little bit more brown, so I'm using the back of my hand and the back of my arm to determine if I'm pretty close to my skin tone. I've determined that I need a bit of brown, I need to darken the skin tone up, so I'm going to use my brown and blend that in. Be sure to paint in a very smooth way because we're going to be using this paper not only for this project but also the next and since this will be um, used for your face you want to have a very smooth surface to work on. Now once you have the closest skin tone that you can make, set it aside so that it can dry. While paper one is drying, go ahead and grab paper number two. Our second piece of paper is for the background. You have a choice as to whether you want to paint this with warm colors or cool colors. So if you don't have paint sticks like I have, feel free to use your paint set. My only requirement is that you do not write any words, letters, numbers, or pictures. We're only doing color and maybe pattern. All done. Now let's set this paper aside to dry. Fold your skin tone paper in half. You will use half of this paper for this project and save the other half for the project after this one. Notice that I flipped my skin tone paper to the back and I'm tracing the head and shoulders piece that I included in your take home packet. I'm drawing my ears on either side. Don't forget this important step. And then I'm going to cut out my head shape.
next get the pattern pieces of paper that I included in your take home packet. You'll notice that there's a large rectangle for your chest piece of your shirt. We're going to glue the chest piece right to your shoulders. So remember, you don't want to put this piece too low so you look like a turtle. You want to put it right at the neckline. Next, grab your background piece. Um, once you have your shirt on, that will give you a good indication as to where you should glue your head and shoulders. Um, make sure that you don't put glue all over the back. Notice I'm putting glue on the edges of my work so that my paper doesn't get too wrinkly. Your background paper should be vertical and the bottom of your shirt should just touch the bottom edge of that paper. Now I almost forgot, since these are royal self-portraits, I wanna make sure to include some of the lace um, to make myself extra fancy. So I'm gluing that to the back of my neck. Remember, you also have the choice of laying this on the front of the shirt. So you decide what looks best to you. Now I can position it on my background paper. Next, I'm going to use two of the smaller rectangles uh, for the arms of my clothing. So I'm gonna glue the back. Um, don't be surprised that your rectangles are a bit longer than the length of your paper. Um, we can always trim those off later, but I do want to make sure that as I'm placing them on either side of my chest piece, that they are right in alignment with the shoulders of the chest piece. Now it's time to create a puffy sleeve. Make sure that you choose some of your scrap paper that's going to be in contrast. It won't just blend into your shoulder pieces. So I'm putting my paper right up against my shoulder to make sure that I draw a semicircle that's large enough to go across my arm. So once I have that traced, I'm gonna go ahead and cut it out. Now, even the males used a puffy sleeve. It was just the style of medieval times. So make sure you're doing this part so that you really look royal. Now that we have our paper cleaned up, it's time to create some royal jewelry for ourselves. You'll notice that I included some metallic papers. Don't feel like you have to use the entire piece. Get creative. You can cut up the, these pieces. Um, you can add embellishments to your clothing. But for my example, I'm just going to create a simple necklace for myself. Don't forget that you can also cut uh, jewelry for yourself, like earrings, but make sure to save some of your metallic paper so that you can design your crown.
Now that we have our jewelry done, it's time to work on our hair. If you don't have paint like I do, you have a couple of options. You can use crayon, you can use oil pastel, or you can also use your paint set that you've been working with. Be sure to pay attention to the texture of your hair, the length of your hair. Is it wavy? Is it straight? So I have very dark, uh, very tight curly hair. So that's the direction that I'm going to paint for myself. Notice I'm painting right on my background to give my hair some volume. And because I do have curly hair, I'm painting in a round way to show the texture of, of my hair. Be sure to paint your hair right up to the tops of your ears. A lot of times we forget that we do have hair on the sides of our head. And try and paint the style that you normally wear your hair in. This will allow it to look more like you. While we're waiting for our hair to dry, we can work on our crown. You'll notice that I included a metallic piece of paper that I would like you to fold in half. Notice that I folded it so that the metallic sheen part is on the inside. I'm going to start on the fold side and come up with a shape that I would like for my crown. I'm going to keep my paper closed like a sandwich and cut it out so that when I open my paper, my crown shape should be symmetrical on both sides. Now, before I start decorating this crown, I want to just kind of measure to make sure that the crown is not too long, that it's gonna fit on my head. And if it doesn't, I would make those adjustments. But now I'm gonna grab some of the bits of scrap paper that I have left over and really make this crown fancy. Looks good to me, now let's glue it on. Be sure that your hair is bone dry before you try to place your crown on your head. Now because I'm creating a video, my hair is not as dry as I would normally wait before putting on the crown, but I'm being really careful not to rip any parts of my crown before I place it. Last but not least, let's create our face. So I'm using oil pastels, but you are more than welcome to use crayon if you don't have oil pastels. We're gonna start with white, and we're going to make the shape of our eyes. Think of a circle or football shape, and I want you to press really hard so that white shows really well. Notice I'm not even worrying about the colored part of my eye yet. I'm just creating the shape that football shape and making sure that they're about the same size. Now I'm also going to make my smile that shows my teeth. So I'm putting a little white in that area where that would be. You do not have to show your teeth, but for this particular face, I'm going to. Next, I'm going to get a black oil pastel. This is to show my eyebrows, and the color of my eyes. I have very dark eyes. They're extremely dark brown. Sometimes they look like they're black, so I use a black crayon to show that. I'm also going to um, trace around the upper edge of my eyes and put some eyelashes. This will make me look more girly. So if you're a boy and you don't wanna look girly, even though we know that boys have eyelashes, just keep them off of your self-portrait. I'm also using the black to fill in the circle in the middle of my eye. Notice I left a little bit of white showing so that my eyes would appear shiny. Now you might be, not be using black for yours. You might be using a blue eye color or a brown eye color. 
I'm also filling in black for the part of my mouth that's going to be open. So if your mouth is not open for your self-portrait, then you can skip this step. Next, I'm going to grab a brown oil pastel and I'm going to make my nose. Keep it simple. Some people use an L shape, some people use a U shape or a circle. Don't get too complicated with the nose. I'm also going to use this brown to show my smile. So I'm making my mouth shape. You can even use this brown if your mouth is going to be closed in your self-portrait and just create a nice smile for yourself. Now I'd like to add some lipstick. So I'm going to find a red and I'm gonna draw kind of like the top of a heart, a curve at the top of my mouth line and color that in. You could use pink, you could use peach for your lips, but I really like a bright, bold red. So this is your choice. If you don't wanna look like you don't have lipstick on, then don't use red. I'll even add a little blush on my cheeks. Now, if you don't want to put this step, you don't have to. And all finished, a very royal self-portrait, even if I do say so myself. <laughs>